Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. I'm super pumped that you guys are joining me here on this fine Tuesday evening, although technically, like, I'm not filming this on Tuesday evening because that would be irresponsible. Before we launch into today's video, I know I talked about this last week, but I wanted to bring it to your attention again this week. I have the awesome opportunity of being involved in something called um, the Wedding Hacker Expo, and that is an online weekend event coming up August 17th and 18th, where 30 different professionals in the financial planning field and wedding industry come together and help you figure out how to plan your wedding in a financially savvy way with some tips and and tricks on how to save money and not lose your sanity in the process. So if you guys are interested in signing up, oh, and uh, I forgot this last week too, it's totally free, 100% free not to free and I don't know about you but that sure sounds real good to me if you guys are interested in signing up go to weddinghackerexpo.com slash Jamie so you know they know that you came from me all right cool also I will leave that in the description box if you just want to go ahead and click there or it's gonna be right here on the screen because my name is Jamie J-A-M-I-E and not Jaime I do get that a lot I'm not a Jaime Although that'd be cool, this is just not me. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump on into the meat of today's video. I wanted to do something a little bit different, kind of fun, something I haven't done before, um, and that is talk about things that I do or have done that were not a part of the job description. Now, this is meant to be lighthearted and fun. I am by no means complaining about my job. I love my job. Like if you guys haven't picked up on this by now, I stinking love my job. I love the little tiny details and I, I, I live for scrambling at the last minute to fix any mistakes that might happen to pop up or creating an event that doesn't have any mistakes at all. I just, I love every element of this. That being said, I entered into this field with an idea of what a wedding planner does. <laughs> And while, yes, I do wedding plannery things, uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows and bouquet tosses. I'm also immensely grateful that all of these things have happened because it's turned me into the planner that I am today. And if I hadn't had these experiences, I wouldn't be prepared for them. So I actually love when things happen that are outside of our normal job description. It's just sometimes fun to look back and reflect on how much I've learned. Oh, and don't be stressed out watching this, okay? So like if you're a bride and you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, what if this happens at my wedding day? Each of these stories has happened like once, okay? And we were there, we fixed it, it ended up not being a problem, but I think it's sometimes it's fun to shed some light on the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, and there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And if this makes you feel anxious, then maybe consider hiring a coordinator so he or she can enjoy doing all this stuff behind the scenes for you too. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Making table numbers and signs. I, I don't have good handwriting. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great either. So when, when I'm put in the position where I have to make a sign last minute and then my hands are all shaky from like the wedding adrenaline and it looks like a toddler did it for them, <laughs> let's just say I won't be opening a calligraphy business anytime soon, but sometimes, sometimes I gotta make some signs. Transporting people. So as a mom of three, as I'm sure you can imagine, my car is usually in a constant state of chaos and stale fries. So the first time that I had a bride get into my car, I was a nursing mom at the time, and I was scooting the pump out of the way and like brushing crumbs off the seat. And I thought, oh, no one talks about this. Okay, oom. <sighs> so now when I go to events, my car is a little bit cleaner. Like a teensy bit. I'm not gonna like say that it's great, but at least it's better. I just never thought that that'd be something that I would do. Pull spines from a cactus out of a grown woman's leg. I, we, it was a backyard event and the tables were like super crammed in and there wasn't a big enough walk space. There's probably some alcohol involved. There was definitely some alcohol involved, but she walked into a cactus. And then I had to sit there with these really cheap tweezers that I had in my emergency kit and I'm like pulling spines out of her leg and I thought, this is not what JLo showed me. Physically support a drunk guest and call an Uber and get them into the Uber. Uh, I don't know if all of their friends had abandoned said person, um, but this person was left without any way of leaving the venue and there wasn't great cell service and so I was the only one on the Wi-Fi. Also, maybe the only one coherent enough to handle this, so <laughs> I felt like, I felt a little bit like a babysitter in that moment. And hey, we got it done, it just didn't see it coming. Mm. Finding a babysitter for a drunk vendor. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of stuff that you're like, how does that happen? You know, frankly, I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure how that happened. Um, let's just say it wasn't necessarily a professional vendor and didn't go as planned 
So we had to find someone to come and monitor that person so we could continue to do our jobs. That one came out of left field. Clean self-tanner out of a shower stall. <laughs> All I have to say is thank goodness for that emergency kit, which I've now referenced twice. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my emergency kit video for you guys to check out if you're interested. Down on my hands and knees in a shower, praying that I don't get self-tanner on me and just like scrubbing the walls and the floors because I didn't want the couple to be charged because the venue was like, that needs to be cleaned up. But obviously the bride and groom are like dancing on the dance floor and I'm not going to pull them off the dance floor to clean up self-tanner. So, <laughs> ooh, this, okay, this one happens more often than just once. Come up with excuses for why family and friends can't just pop right on into the bridal suite to say hi really fast. Because usually it's like, oh, it's okay, I know the bride. And I really want to respond with, everybody here does that doesn't mean you get to go in there because the bride needs a minute to be by herself or she's getting ready for photos or she's putting her dress on and like being a bouncer outside of the bridal suite i guess i could see that one coming it just never ceases to surprise me the random things that we end up doing <laughs> mc for an event which means like be the person on the microphone when the dj doesn't speak english but that's the only language that the guests speak I'm a personality, sure, like, I, you give me a microphone and I'll be like, yeah, okay. But when I have other things to do, jumping on the microphone and directing everything, it's, that's not in my job description. And now you can bet your bottom dollar that I ask and confirm that the DJ will be the MC for the evening. Because... That was a rough one. And I felt so awkward being like, ladies and gentlemen, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, if we could have you take your seats, that'd be great. Thank you. It's not, not what I saw. Coming. Threaten to cut power to a portion of the building to get the friender DJ to stop playing music. The... <laughs> The venue had a cutoff time for the event and all the guests needed to leave at that time. But the DJ had um, indulged a little, a lot, indulged a lot. And the crowd wanted to keep dancing. So he kept playing music and uh, we needed them to stop. And so he kind of wasn't listening because he was excited that people were on the dance floor. And, and to have to go back to that mama bear mode and be like, <laughs> my clients are going to be charged so much money if you don't stop right now. Like, knock it off. Oh my gosh. So the venue and I came up with a plan of threatening to shut off power because that was literally the only option we had left. It's glamorous behind the scenes, let me tell you. Being a professional lipstick monitor. This one's kind of fun, actually. I <laughs> will check in with clients and be like, how are your lips? Do you need to touch up? You good? Okay, cool. Or I've even, sometimes I actually used to carry my iPad around at events, but now it's too bulky, whatever. <laughs> sideline that one um and I would bring my iPad up to I remember bringing it up to a client with her lipstick and being like here you go so she could use it as a big old mirror instead of like something tiny or compact or something that was that was a fun one I never thought I'd do something like that but obviously now being in the field it makes a lot more sense coming up with a catering plan when the caterer is six hours late now we use the term caterer loosely because they were not an actual wedding caterer Again, with the friender situation. But we had several guests ready, lined up to go down the street to Ralph's to pick up steaks and some easy sides for us to whip together because we didn't know what we were going to do when we had like, I don't know, 70 people that we needed to feed. Um, the catering company ended up coming. They got some strong language from me, but we, we did end up feeding the people. It's just, um, I do menu planning for my family like meal planning, but never for a group of that size. Tear down an entire wedding when the tear down crew completely bails. Now, whether they forgot or they weren't aware that they were needed, that they needed to do it, or they um, drank too much, I don't know. But we've definitely stayed for like three or four hours after an event before me and a couple of assistants just being like, let's just keep going. Like, we can't leave it here. Let's just go. And now I am very specific when asking who the teardown crew is. And I'm very specific of asking for names and phone numbers and confirming that they know they're doing the teardown because I ain't doing that again. That was exhausting. Setting up an entire cocktail hour spread worth of food when um, we have 20 minutes to do so. <laughs> so. I don't know if you guys know this, but my mom actually works with me a lot. Um, she's one of my assistants and she is like the hostess with the mostest. She's so 
so gifted and talented when it comes to putting parties together and these elaborate, really pretty food displays. And so I put her on that. And I was like, if you could do this, that would be great. Well, I have to run the ceremony by myself because we thought that it was going to be more prepared than it actually was. So we were setting up the entire cocktail hour spread from scratch. So I run the ceremony by myself. While the ceremony is going on, I run back to check on her. And she is literally just like dumping things, which obviously you don't know my mom, but I know my mom and I have never seen her do that. We were so slammed for time that like a strawberry fell on the ground and I watched her kick it under the tablecloth. It was just like, well, we got to do what we got to do. You guys, she didn't even take the salsa out of the, uh, the container and pour it into a bowl. She just put the salsa container in the bowl. We had no time. And I never thought that would be professional charcuterie tray people, but, uh, and we still are not professional charcuterie tray people, but sometimes we gotta be. Bus tables. It's not in my job description. We don't do it anymore because I learned the hard way to confirm that there are indeed people to bus tables. This is gonna sound like my parents work with me all the time. Uh, my dad was the efficient for this wedding and he realized that there was no one to bus tables. So he actually stayed and helped me bus tables. And they had this like wheelbarrow thing that they wanted us to put the plates into. And I was like, oh, this feels a little sketch. And my dad's just a total workhorse and he's getting in there. Like I promise I have other employees other than my parents. Like my dad was not supposed to still be there. And so he's loading all the plates into this wheelbarrow and goes to lift it up and a bunch of plates come crashing out all across the floor. And I was like, well, we've learned from this experience. We're not doing this again because the liability of those plates is now on me. Great, <laughs> this is not in my job description. Luckily the couple was super understanding and they were really grateful that we bust the tables for them, but not in the brochure. Be the bad guy who takes the fall for decisions to save the couple. I mean, I guess that's in the job description. I just like, didn't realize how often it would happen until it started happening and I have no problem with it. If any time one of my clients says, oh, I'm sorry, my wedding planner says I can't. I'm like, yes, queen, go girl, blame me. I'm here for it. But anytime they can use me as an excuse to get out of something, I've even gone as far to say like, hey, if you don't wanna go to an event on Friday night, then you just say, hey, my wedding planner actually gave me a lot of stuff that I need to work on, so I can't make it, sorry. And, <laughs> and I'm here for it. Talk to a disgruntled aunt when she's mad at the bride and wants to, remedy a tense family situation during family photos. Didn't see that one coming, felt really awkward, but did my best to diffuse the situation as much as we possibly could to prevent World War III at this poor bride's wedding. Talk to the cops when they're called because the backyard wedding is a little bit louder than everyone anticipated and you forgot to warn your neighbors. And last but most certainly not least, clean up someone else's yak attack with nothing more than a hose and a five gallon bucket. I'm gonna leave you with that one because not in my job description. So hopefully this week's video was a little bit of fun for you guys. Sometimes it's just fun to look at the unexpected sides of wedding planning. You know, the, the sides that J-Lo and the wedding planner lied to me about because there's a lot more to it than people expect. If you haven't done so already, like this video because you like the video. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. I know it's a little different. Hopefully lighthearted and doesn't freak you out. This is just meant to be silly. And until next week, bye guys.